สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So today I am making tom yum pizza. That's right. Now, as brilliant as this idea sounds, unfortunately, I didn't come up with it. This was first introduced to me way back when, when I was in Thailand, and Pizza Hut Thailand came up with this menu item, and I loved it. Today, if you're in Thailand and you go to any sort of big pizza chain restaurant, you can still get Tom Yum Pizza there. But trust me, this recipe is way better. And if you already know how to make pizza at home. All you need is the sauce recipe, and everything else you already know how to do. So it's super easy. Let's get started. So the most important component of this dish is the pizza sauce. That is where the tom yum flavor lives. And for that, of course, we're gonna need the tom yum trinity, as I like to call them: lemongrass, galangal, and kaffir lime leaves. And I've gone and chopped them quite finely, so it doesn't take me as long to pound them into a paste. And of course, being tom yum, if you want, you can make it a little bit spicy. Add a Thai chili or two. Now I'm gonna go in first with the lemongrass, and I could just pound everything all at once, but I find that if I do a little bit at a time, it's actually a lot easier to get them fine. Okay, that didn't take very long at all, and we already got the lemongrass quite fine. The key is to slice it really thin because you want to break up those long lemongrass fibers, and then the other stuff goes in. And that is it. That's our base tom yum or paste. Now, before we move on to the stove, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna blend my tomatoes. So I've got some canned whole peeled tomatoes here. You can start with diced. Make sure it's unsalted, and I'm just gonna blitz it really quick in the blender just to break it down slightly. There you go. Just a couple of pulses. You can do this with a food processor. I don't need a complete puree, just so, but just so it's not like whole tomatoes anymore. That's it. Like that's all it takes. All right. So I've got some olive oil in this pot here, and I'm gonna add some chopped garlic. I'm gonna turn the heat on ever so slightly. And let the garlic gently infuse into the olive oil. Olive oil does not have a high heat tolerance, so you don't want to ever like cook it on super high heat. Okay, so it's had a few minutes. The smallest pieces of garlic has turned golden. I'm gonna add the blended tomatoes. Give that a stir. The oil is gonna float on top. Don't worry, it will get mixed in once this is nice and reduced. Now we're gonna add. Another really really important um, ingredient, which is Thai chili paste. Thai chili paste you can buy or you can make. It's not that difficult, and I do have a recipe which I will link to. And this is such an iconic flavor of tom yum gung or tom yum with shrimp that without it, it's really not going to be the same. So make sure you get a hold of it somehow. And Thai chili paste are quite sweet in and of itself, so you won't need to add any sugar or any other sweet vegetables like onions, carrots at all. There's also lots of shallots cooked down in that paste already as well. Now a lot of people have asked me, can you just buy instant tom yum paste, which you can buy in a jar sometimes, and just add it to tomato sauce? And the answer is yes, but the flavor is not going to be as good because obviously you're dealing with like. An instant paste, as opposed to using fresh herbs and fresh ingredients, and also you're gonna need to play around with the amount because that paste already has salt, sugar, like MSG, like all the seasonings already in there. So you can't just like substitute that paste for chili paste, for example, in my recipe, and then keep everything the same. So it's something that you'll need to taste and adjust. And now I'm gonna season this with, of course, fish sauce. That's basically it for now. I'm gonna let this reduce until it's super, super thick before we add our herb paste. So about an hour. Look how thick and luscious this sauce is. That is what you want. You want it to at this point be a little thicker than you want it to be at the end because we're gonna add some lime juice. All right. So now that herb paste that we made earlier goes in. And then I'm gonna let this simmer just to infuse all those herb flavors for another three to five minutes. And I didn't add the herb paste way in the beginning, just because I find the flavors are a lot fresher when you just add it at the end, and you don't sort of like cook it all away. All right, so it's had a few minutes to simmer. I can really smell all the herbs coming through now. I'm gonna turn this off, and then 
add some fresh lime juice, which is super important for tom yum. You want that tartness, right? And then as you can see, it'll loosen itself up into a nice pizza sauce consistency. Mm, there you go. I'm gonna give it a taste. Mm. Oh, perfect. You want this to be tart because this is tom yum we're talking about. And you really want to taste all the herbs that are coming through. If it's not spicy, you can still add more chilies at this point. But that is perfect. You can definitely adjust with more fish sauce, more sugar if you think it needs it, but I don't think it needs it anymore at this point. All right, time to assemble the pizza. So I'm going to show you how I make pizza dough, but if you already have a pizza dough recipe that you like, by all means, go ahead and use it. Or if you don't want to make dough, you can just buy dough already made. Some stores sell them or buy the base already made if you want to make it super easy. But I just want to show you this recipe, which I normally use. It's really quick and easy. Okay, so I've got um, bread flour here in this bowl. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and a little bit of sugar, which is going to help the crust brown better when there's sugar in it. I'm gonna give this a whisk. Okay, once you get that thoroughly mixed in, I'm going to add some yeast. And when I make bread, I always use instant yeast. It's really easy to work with. You don't need to put it in warm water or anything like that. And then whisk that in. Um, so to this, I'm gonna add some water and just a touch of olive oil. And the olive oil will help keep the dough tender. There you go. And then with my hands, I'm just gonna stir all this together and get a rough dough out of it. And yes, you can totally do this by machine using um, the dough hook, but I find it so much easier to, quicker to just do it by hand so you don't have to haul the thing out. In the beginning, it's going to feel too dry. Keep kneading because the wet part is in the middle. And as you coax the middle out, it will eventually feel more moist. See, and now it's actually really sticky and wet, which is exactly what you want. Now, at this point, I'm just trying to get the dough to not be completely smooth. I just want the moisture to be evenly distributed to, throughout the dough. So once I feel like, okay, I've kneaded it, I've kneaded it for like 30 seconds and it hasn't really changed in terms of moisture content. It seems to be well distributed. That's it. That's all you need to do. I find you don't need to knead any more than that. It'll be like a rough shaggy dough like this. It's totally fine. This is why I love this recipe so much. It's almost no knead and it still comes out great. Okay, I'm going to cut it in half because that actually makes two pizza. I'm going to put each one into a bowl with a little bit of oil in it just so it doesn't stick. Okay, that's it. So now my recommendation for the best flavor is you do this recipe the day before. Cover it, put it in the fridge and let it slowly rise in the fridge for one day. When you're ready to bake it, pull it out two hours before you want to use it so that it can come to room temperature you will get a much better flavor development. All that time will develop flavor in the dough. If you were to really rush it, you could just let this rise at room temp for an hour and a half to two hours and just bake it right away. But trust me, it's really worth the extra planning to do it overnight. So let's talk toppings real quick, really simple. I'm using shrimp, which I cut in half horizontally because they're quite big. If you've got smaller shrimp, you may not need to do that. You can do chicken or whatever you want instead. I'm using fresh mozzarella and some sliced shallots. This is optional, you don't have to add it. And oyster mushrooms, which is a classic mushroom that goes into tom yum. So you definitely wanna have some sort of Asian mushroom there. I'm just gonna oil them a little bit so that when they are in the oven, they don't dry out. Oh my goodness, a huge one I forgot to tear. So you want to break it down into sort of bite-sized pieces like this. So no whole mushrooms in the bowl. How did I miss that one? And then if it's really long, I just pinch off the legs just so it's easier when you cut the pizza. You don't have too many big long things like that. There we go. So I'm going to shape my dough right on the pan that I'm going to use to bake the pizza so that way I don't have to transfer because we don't have the big pizza peels at home, right? So I'm going to flour this 
quite generously. And then this is the dough that I made yesterday. I've let it come to room temperature for a few hours now. So you want to give it at least two hours. And don't worry about the oil, it'll all get kneaded in. So I'm going to flatten this out into a circle-ish. And this is why I like to divide the dough prior to letting it rise, because if you let it rise in bulk, you cut it, now you've got a semicircle that you've got to coax into a circle, so it's just easier this way. But if you don't have room in the fridge, definitely you can do that. Now I'm going to flour the top a little bit, just so it's not... I probably put a little too much oil <laughs> in that container. Okay, and I want to make sure I flour the bottom too, but you know what, I'm just going to flip it because you definitely don't want the pizza sticking to the pan. Now at this point, your goal is to get this stretched out to 10 inches. This is um, the size, for, for this recipe, it's supposed to be 10 inches. And I know that my hand span is eight inches, so I just need to stretch it out a couple inches more on each side. And you can use whatever technique you want. I just stretch it like this. <laughs> like I just pull out the edges. The edges don't have to be perfectly round. In fact, there's something more delicious about a pizza that's not perfectly circular. Okay, so I am going to just make sure I flour the bottom a little bit because sometimes I find I do get issues with the pizza not wanting to come off the, the bottom because there's not enough flour. Just so that I can be more certain. Now the sauce goes on. And that is it. Now, the way I'm going to bake this, I'm actually not going to bake it. I have my own way of making pizza that's a little quicker than baking. I'm going to broil the top for two minutes until the top is nice and cooked, the crust is golden brown, and then I'm going to finish it off on the skillet to cook the bottom. So the whole process will only take me five minutes way faster than like baking it in an oven traditionally and I'll get higher heat by doing it this way. So we're trying to get as close to like one of those wood-fired pizza, commercial pizza oven that gets super, super hot as much as we can. So I got my broiler set on high, preheated, and the rack is at the top, top level. So it's very hot. About two to three minutes depending on your broiler and I find that you also might want to rotate the pizza halfway through because a lot of broilers are really uneven. This is the first time I'm using Adam's broiler so I'll have to keep an eye on it and see, see what it does in there. And meanwhile, you want to preheat your skillet as well. And oh, by the way, if you're going to use this method, make sure your pizza is not bigger than your skillet. <laughs> Clearly a hot spot in the back so I'm going to rotate that pizza. <laughs> that front part is not getting cooked. There you go. Okay. Woohoo! Look at this. Look how nice that is. And that has only been about two and a half minutes. Ah, hot. So now I gotta hurry and transfer that onto my skillet. That's why it's important you flour the bottom because I've had issues before where I'm like trying to coax this thing out and it's sticking and it's tearing. So that flour at the bottom is very important. So this is going to take only another two minutes. So all you're just check checking now is just how's the bottom doing? Is it nice and brown? Maybe you can see it a little bit. Yeah, that's done. Look how quick that was, right? You don't have to Preheat the oven for hours. You don't have to wait for it to bake for 15 minutes. Et voila. Just gonna do one garnish of cilantro. You don't have to if you don't like cilantro, but I think it adds a nice color and flavor and freshness. Yee. Look at that. And now you eat, and you wanna eat this now? While it's still hot. I'm gonna just steal the shrimp and put it on my piece. I probably could have put more shrimp, but that's okay. Check this out. Look at that. 
nice the thinness of the dough is exactly how i like it if you want really thin you can stretch this out to a 12 inch pizza but i think this sauce is quite strong that it does need you know a little bit more dough than like the super super thin pizza oh it smells just like tom yum but with that charred bread aroma so good mm. Mm. Seriously, probably my favorite pizza topping ever. Nice and crisp ex exterior, but tender enough that you don't have to fight with it. You know, sometimes the crust is so chewy, <laughs> you're like fighting with it. So still nice and tender, really good flavor development. That is from the slow overnight rise. And it is just, I mean, you still get that tomato sauce flavor that, um, that you love on pizza, but you now have sour and spicy and the aroma of all those herbs, the lemongrass, it is just amazing. If you haven't had a Tom Yum pizza, this is an absolute must try. And it really isn't easy. I would make the sauce the day in advance, make the dough in the day in advance, and then everything just comes together really quickly once you've got this prepped. So the recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. And if you want to join us on Patreon, where you'll get some bonus content, extra videos, and early recipes, I'll put the link with all the info in the description box below. And when you make this recipe, send me a photo. I definitely want to see it on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Subscribe to the show if you haven't done so. That's how you're not gonna miss a recipe and click the bell icon as well so you get a notification when I post a new video. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time for your next delicious timing.